Hey guys, this is Mike Tarala with Click, and welcome to video 8 in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks series. In the last video, I showed you specific styling properties to adjust the layout and size of your sheets. In this video, I'm going to show you how to style your charts and cover the different properties that control chart data styling and the overall chart look. Before we continue, be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription-based content, instructor-led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to use an existing app. So in the last video, we looked at the Retro Sales Analysis app. So we're going to open that up. And we're brought to the app overview page. And here you can see I already have some sheets, some of my private ones that I'm working on. Some are public. Again, as I showed in a previous video, you can right click and make them public so others can see them. So you can publish them to manage spaces or use them in a code development scenario in a shared space. So we're going to create a new sheet. And we'll call this one do more chart styling. And we're not going to assign a thumbnail yet for the sheet. We'll do that after. And we're brought into the what I call the simplified authoring mode. So we're going to start out here and then we'll move over to advanced options later. But basically just want to give you a baseline and provide some tips and tricks along the way, some best practices that you should know when creating charts and utilizing the styling features. So we're going to search for a field and I'm going to get my sales figure, drop it as a measure right on the target of the chart placeholder. And then I also have um, a master item called year, which we'll talk about later, but basically it's a usable um, element or reusable expression um, stored inside a library. And we'll drop that as a dimension. Now I'd like to point out in the visualization section, you'll see auto chart is selected. And this is important because when you switch over to advanced options or if you want to copy and paste your charts to reuse them and make different changes, if auto chart is selected, you might lose your styling and setting features. So first tip and trick here is after you are sure the type of visualization you want is the one you want to use, choose that visualization. So right now I know I want to use a bar chart, so I'm just going to choose the bar chart. Okay. Again, if you keep the auto chart selected, if you switch over to advanced options, it'll use the automatic chart suggestions. You might lose your style settings. So just keep in mind. So we're going to select the uh, vertical bar chart here. And you could always verify that by looking at this title header here. Okay, so now we're just going to jump into some of the styling. So this is going to cover styling the chart data itself. So here you have your standard sorting, not too much of a big deal. You have color set to auto, single or by dimension. I'm just going to make it by dimension and you can see it will automatically use a palette. Now you can change these palettes with themes or also with other settings and advanced options. We have labels here. So for labels, we're just going to write total sales by and we'll fill that in later because I'm going to show you a little trick with that as well. Subtitle colored by year and we can change the color of the subtitle. We can change the font. We can show values on the labels. Now, if you want some more real estate or more sizing for your charts, for example, high dimension title, you know it's a year because you can see the years across the bottom. So maybe you don't need to display the actual field name year. And same thing with the measure title. You know it's sales because it says it in the uh, title of the chart. Do you need it along the Y axis? Now you can change these. This is a completely up to you. Also, up in the field, you'll notice that we're doing an aggregation of sales. We can change the label here, total sales and style money formatting. And you can see how it changes that there as well. 
Okay. So let's filter on a particular dimension value because we're going to use both of these charts um, to basically represent sales for different dimensional values. So let's go back to our fields and let's look for different models. So I'm going to search for model and there's a field called model variation. I'm going to drop it right on the filters and we're going to select arcade stick. So now you can see filters applied, model variation, arcade stick. So up here where we have our total sales by for the name of the chart, we'll just go to labels and in the title total sales by year for arcade sticks. Okay, another tip and trick. If your filter is applied to the chart, this is a individual filter that is applied to the chart object, very similar to utilizing uh, an expression called set analysis, which I'll explain at a later date if you're not familiar with it. This applies that single value to this chart. If you use a footnote within your labels, it's going to replace that filter. So you'll notice that now it just says this is a footnote. So you can put in your own custom text here if you want. Okay, so that's the auto text, but keep in mind if you want to use an additional footnote for the labels, you need to make sure that you specify applied filter arcade sticks if you're using this method. Okay, that way the individual who's analyzing the data knows that the uh, filter is applied. Okay, so just be aware of that when utilizing footnotes and uh, applied filters from simplified authoring. Okay, if we go back to styling, we could change the bar outline. So you have a color wheel or you can go right to the palette and we can make this of a medium width. And you could also change the size of the bars if you wish. And there are some additional options for scroll bar and scroll alignment and setting grid line spacing as well. And now this will depend on the actual chart as well, utilizing scroll alignment or the mini chart, depending on how many points are plotted. Here, I'm just gonna reset everything back to normal. Okay, there's also the ability to add a tooltip so when you hover over the chart in this instance, you can see we're looking at the year and the total sales. So if I wanted to add a custom tooltip, I could add an expression or a measure such as uh, quantity and sales, a description that shows quantity sold and sales for the year. We could add a measure. I have a measure called line item quantity. And we're going to summarize that. And it shows you a little preview. And that way, when you hover over the bar, you get something like that. And you can see now we're looking at two measures here in this case. So we have 148 sold in 2021, 210 sold in 2022, and 12 in 2023. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to spend on styling the chart within simplified authoring. Now we're going to move into advanced options. But before we do that, I wanted to reutilize what we've created already for another chart. So I'm going to click on this add item button. I'm going to right click on my existing chart copy, right click on the new chart placeholder paste. What it'll do is it'll add another object and then just right click on the original placeholder and hit delete. Now I'm just going to make some quick changes to this. So we're going to go into our model variation for the filter. And instead of arcade sticks, we're going to look at control pads. So now we have a nice side by side comparison for arcade sticks versus control pads for this example. And then we also can go to the uh, labels. 
and we can just type this in. Actually, we just I'm just going to delete the footnote and we'll just use the default filter applied. And then we also can change the label. Okay, so now we have our two charts. And for those of you who might be skipping through the series, this table across the bottom, I described this in the actual beginning of uh, the series. This is just for inspecting data. Uh, it's not an actual object that's on your dashboard. At any time, you can just toggle between edit and design and you can see th the difference on how it actually looks. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to advanced options. And there are our two charts. So I'm just going to make some adjustments to these charts. And now I'd like to apply a background image. And the way we can do that is by selecting the chart and then going over to presentation and then selecting styling. And then here you have your other styling enhancements. You can change the font, strength, pixel size, as well as add background image or background color. So what we're going to do here is add a background image. And I'm going to select the media library and select the image from the library. And I'm going to choose this background that I have and click insert. Now we have the ability to change the size. Now your background images that you're going to use for your charts are going to vary based off of style and preference and brand, but you might have to create those images to fit the look and feel you're looking for. Here, if I select always fit, you can see it doesn't really fill up the whole chart. If I say fit width and I expand it, it will automatically fit the width of the chart. Let's move this object here and show you. And if I say stretch to fit, it'll fit up the entire it'll fill up the entire chart. Or always fill. So depending on the screen size and resolution, you might want to adjust your image accordingly. But for this one, utilizing always fill and the center position kind of makes the background fit perfectly within that chart. Now I'm going to just make some changes to the title color scheme, such as changing the title to white. Let's change that subtitle to white. If we go to colors and legend, originally we selected by dimension. So what I'm going to do here is now is just make this a single color. And we'll make it white. And I'm going to go back to the styling and then you can see from the general section now we're under chart. I'm going to use the medium outline. And make that black. And there's your chart. And we can do the same thing for this guy here. Go to styling. Under general background image, media library, select an image. Always fill. Center position. Make a single color, color white, go to styling, chart, black, and medium for the outline. Now you have your two charts that show sales by arcade sticks and sales for control pads across the years and with some retro styling, if you will. Okay, so last thing, the tool set that you use in your arsenal for design is very important. Um, as I showed in a previous video, I used Adobe Express to create a thumbnail. 
Um, we can also take screenshots utilizing a product called Snagit. Now, again, you might have a different product. So just to give you a quick example, let's say I'm in this mode now for analysis. We do print screen and I'm just going to grab this piece here. And now I have the Snagit editor showing me the object that I want. I'm just going to click save and just save it within my uh, folder that I'm working on. I'm going to now click on edit sheet and then making sure that I'm on the main canvas by clicking the main canvas. In other words, I'm not on a selected object where it says thumbnail. I'm going to change the th thumbnail to the screenshot that we just saved. I'm just going to navigate to the tips and tricks folder. and grab that thumbnail that we just took a screenshot of. Where is it? Here it is. Now I added it here. So now when you go to sheets, you actually have a preview of what your analytics look like by the thumbnail. Okay, so that's all we're going to talk about here for styling charts. If you are interested in learning more about styling apps and charts, be sure to check out our comprehensive selection of structured learning content at learning.click.com. Simply jump to video tutorials, view all tutorials, and you will see filters to narrow down your selection to your own needs. Here you can choose from both free and subscription based content. By default, you may see a filter already selected for how do I videos. I will clear that for this example and simply enter the keyword styling in the search box and click the search icon. You can now see the styling and app course is available. Please note that certain courses might require a continuous classroom subscription. For more information, please visit learning.click.com. In the next video, I will introduce you to the master items library. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.